Hey guys, welcome to the Dragon Momoko Testament Review. Now, before I actually get into such things as the articulation and kind of, you know, display some fancy poses, I'm actually going to do some paint aligning as well as some other little detail stuff to the kit before we get to that. Uh, and I'm actually going to show you exactly what I'm doing along the way. Alright guys, so the first thing we're going to do before we get to any of the detailing is we're going to take this apart just by the different limbs because you don't really want to handle the entire thing when you're doing all the you know water slides and the panel lining. You kind of just want to keep it all separate. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is use the panel line accent color brown. Uh, I'm using this on the red because I think it just comes out better than the black. The black is just, I don't know, it's too dark, but using this, I, I think it... It just matches a little better so this is probably just a personal preference but yeah I'm gonna use the brown just for all the red and dark red parts now to give you a word of caution most people are going to tell you to put a, a clear coat or a, a gloss coat over this before you start panel lining uh, me personally out of the 200 and some kits I've used this uh, you know type of accent panel lining on never had any issues but some people will say that this instant that you touch this to the plastic, I guess depending on the plastic, it is going to explode in your hand. So, you know, just maybe just put a clear coat on it just for, um, you know, for goodness sake, so that way you're not damaging any of your kits. Um, but I'm not putting like an entire layer all over the entire kit. I'm just kind of dabbing it in certain spots and it should be fine like that. So now that the panel line accent is on the front skirts, uh, dried up a little bit, I'm actually going to show you how I personally remove it. So what you can use is just some Zippo lighter fluid. This is basically just some stuff I can get down over at 7-Eleven. Uh, maybe you can get like your local hardware store or uh, perhaps over at Walmart. And then you're gonna need some Q-tips. Uh, these are not like the Q-tips that you can kind of like pull and start flaking off. Um, these are essentially like self-contained so they absorb all the lighter fluid very well and it's going to allow us to get all that excess stuff off without leaving any like strings of uh, cotton or anything. And without Q-tip we are basically just going to kind of just rub a little bit of this off. It's not taking off any of the panel line that's already seeped into the crevices. And pretty much good. Now with panel line in the silver, I'm going to go with the panel line accent color black. Uh, honestly, you could just stick with the dark brown if you really want to, but I'm going to use this one for the silver. Okay, now it's time to apply the water slide decals. I do have a tutorial and I'll link that in the description below so that way you can see exactly how to apply water slide decals. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and apply some basic ones, not every single one, but more or less the ones that are like really uh, stylistic and descriptive. With the kit now panel lined and all the decals and top coating applied, we can go ahead and take a look at the details. So the panel lines is going to be the first thing you notice on this kit. There's just so many of them, so it's going to be really awesome for those that really love doing a lot of panel lining on their kits. Next is going to be the overall design. This is going to be from the Astray series and honestly it looks great. I really wish that Bandai would have took some kind of opportunity to make a model kit of it, but all they released was the Robot Damashi figure and as cool as that is, that can rack up pretty high in price if you're trying to buy it online. Now for hands, you are going to have these fully articulate hands. They're really bad. Honestly, I would recommend you either doing some massive improvements on them or just trash them because they are just not good. Next are going to be these open hands and these trigger figure hands for the pistols in which I am going to talk about these because there are some problems. The beam saber holding hands and lastly the fists. Now this kit does not come with a pilot, nor does it come with an open hatch feature. It's whatever, I'm kind of just accepting of it because I don't think any Dragon Moko kit has had that, so it is what it is. Now for clear parts, you are going to get a clear green for the camera on the top of the head, as well for the eyes, but I decided not to paint the top camera, and instead I just went ahead and painted the eyes. Alright, next let's roll into articulation. The head is going to be on a ball joint. The shoulder can move up and down. This part can move back and forth. This shoulder bit can move back and forth. The shoulder joint itself can move pretty far up. Right here inside the shoulder is going to be another joint so that way you can move it forward. Bicep swivel. 
Two points of articulation in the elbow, so you are gonna have a pretty good bend. Ball joint for the wrist, and a hinge. Waist can move back and forth. You do get a side to side bend. Side skirt can move out. Front skirts are gonna be on ball joints so they can move all around and a little bit forward. Back skirts are joined together so they can move out, but they are gonna be pretty loose. The hips have a little mechanism right in here, so if you want, you could push this down and it can come a little bit further than with the other hips, so it's gonna give it a little bit of height. Because the side skirts are pretty lacking in articulation, it's going to immobilize articulation on the legs as well. Can't go back that far. Okay forward, but you can kind of move it to the side to give it a little bit more of articulation. Two points of articulation in the knee, so whenever you bend it like that, you're gonna have a little bit of a movement right there in the legs, that's pretty cool. And for this one in the front knee, you can basically move this down and you're gonna see a little bit of a joint maneuvering up in there. Ankle arm or articulation is gonna be basically on a ball joint. Toe bend. And a double ball joint within here and inside the base of the foot, so it's gonna give you pretty good range of movement and ankle bend. So the articulation on this thing is actually pretty good so far. I don't really have any major problems, except for it's not gonna have a ab crunch. Uh, if you consider that major, I mean, I, rightfully so, I, I can't agree with that. Uh, but it doesn't bother me as much because everything else is pretty good and obviously to the standard of what most master grades can do. So I don't really have any problems, but yeah, I really wish it would've came with the ab crunch and perhaps uh, maybe some better head articulation. Now something I do want to mention is that the head construction is really bad. Um, there's a lot of things I had to shave, like in terms of pegs, I had to cut a lot of stuff uh, just to make it barely fit, which you can still see there is a crease right in there, so um, I didn't do the best of work, but I was kind of being a little hasty during the time I was actually building this. So yeah, you just gotta keep in mind that the head construction is going to be the worst thing on this entire kit. So the first accessory we're going to talk about is going to be the Divine Striker. This is going to act as its flight pack and it also acts as a weapon with the claw gimmick right there in the front. For articulation it is going to have a rotation right here, another rotation here at the base. The claws are able to move out, ratchet joints here, here, and lastly right here. A lot of people has warned me about this little peg right here that the connection can break. Honestly, I haven't had any problems with it, but as a word of caution, just be mindful of it. Now here it is in its more like resting mode. I think it looks really good just as is. It doesn't really need to be engaged for me to really love the Testament. Even without this Divine Striker, the Testament lo looks just incredibly beautiful. So having this as just an addition, I think it looks perfect. So not really going to be hating on it at all. Here it is with the wings engaged, and this is a good time to mention that this kit is going to come with a stand adapter. And here it is with the claws engaged. Next we're gonna take a look at is going to be the Trichirios Kai, which is going to be the shield for the Divine Testament. And this is a really cool looking shield because it's barely a shield at all. Uh, it doesn't really cover much, but it does have a lot of cool weapons. So it's gonna have the retractable blade here in the front, as well as the five claws right here on the underside. And then you can also house the beam pistols. And here's how they're housed. And here it is utilizing the blade in the front. Now we do have these beam pistols, but there is going to be a problem mounting these in the hands. So they go into the hand fine enough, but then trying to mount the other side of the hand does not work. It just does not have a clean fit because this is just going to be too wide. So the best course of action is probably to sand a bit of this part off so that way it can fit a little bit more and maybe even sand the sides of the actual beam pistol because this is just not going to fit. And we're also gonna have the beam revolver and talk about a cool weapon. It's gonna have this blade right here in the front. This part can flip up and then this can rotate. So 
really cool, but it did it does have a little bit of a problem trying to connect into the actual trigger hand. And next we're gonna have is the beam sabers. So you're gonna get two effect parts with the hilts and they are cool, but the problem with them is they cannot be held in the hands. Um, that's because there's a fitting issue and you're either gonna have to shave down the beam saber or you're gonna have to maybe shave down the actual hand itself. But regardless, the hand just will not fit in there. Um, it can fit within the base of the hand, but the four fingers are not gonna be able to go on top of it. The last thing I'm going to mention are going to be the water slide decals. Honestly, I did not have any problems with them. They all went on very smooth and they're pretty much on par with Bandai's. So for my final thoughts, let's start with the bad. Honestly, it's really just with the fitting of the hands, with the weapons, that's probably going to be the major issue. Otherwise, everything else is pretty minor. Uh, some fitting issues with the head and then some parts falling off here and there whenever you're like just messing around with it. But honestly, I didn't really experience too much of that except for with the shoulders and then the little V fin uh, in the middle of like the two orange horns or yellow horns, I should say. Um, otherwise, er the fitting for everything else was really good, really spot on. Um, it, it felt like a master grade more so near the end of the build and not at the beginning because in the beginning with the chest and the head, I really didn't feel much of a master grade feel. Now with the good, honestly, this thing is just, it blows me away how amazing it is. It looks fantastic. The panel lining that you could do on this is just absurd. You could do so much with it. If you also wanna like maybe color certain parts uh, differently, you can really mask all, like on the edges of the panels so that way you can just, you know, do some different colors, different shades of red or you know, whatever you're trying to do. Um, otherwise, the aesthetics of this is fantastic. The range of articulation is amazing. Um, it is really a beautiful kit that I don't understand why Bandai hasn't capitalized on with making a master grade or even a top notch high grade. Uh, anything I would just really be all for. Now that's all from me guys. Thank you all for watching. I know the unboxing of this kit happened like months and months ago but I really had a lot of things going on and I really want to finish the Barbados before I finish this so that kind of came up. But I'm glad I did finish this kit because it's nothing but amazing and I cannot wait to put it on the shelf because it is going to be there for a very long time. So overall, if you can, try to pick this thing up because it is going to look beautiful on your shelf with just minimum work. But that's all for me. I'll be seeing y'all in the next video. Bye bye. And I'd like to give a quick shout out to all my members of the channel. Honestly guys, without your help, things would be so much harder to actually produce content on this channel. So thank you so much for supporting me and I'm just extremely grateful. But thank you very much.